just this time i don't think so anyway let's check it out let's check it out and we are live sweet 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 hi everyone this is chicho welcome to my channel and welcome to another live stream we're back in the kitchen today is september 2nd 2020 and uh, we're doing a cooking live stream but we're also going to be talking about uh, sort of focused on nostalgia someone recommended suggested requested that we do a live stream regarding nostalgia so we decided to merge uh, a cooking stream and a talk on nostalgia so we try to keep the discussion focused there but open discussion to a certain degree right and uh, today's cooking we're making armenian persian cuckoo and it's a recipe that we've made uh we've shared before and i think we've done at least maybe two live streams of making cuckoo young polacks how are you doing welcome welcome to another live stream and by the way the chat is going to start appearing here because we got camera angles shooting down on the stove tops here right because we're going to be using both elements two elements once we get the ball rolling on this right we're going to be doing a little bit of cutting on this side initially some mixing on this side and then we're gonna get both stove tops going and cook up the cuckoos All right lonely piggy how are you doing chicho how's it going doing well doing well on a wednesday i went and picked up my comic books should i show you what i picked up today should i show you what i picked up today while we wait for people to come in great lasagna hello brother how you doing today doing well doing well i'm gonna do my little intro sure let's see it hi chef hi joker how are you doing let me come back i'm gonna go grab the comics i picked up today i'll be back in like 10 seconds okay actually i can go from this side let's go from this side check this out x how are you doing hope you're doing well chicho was finally able to catch a stream nice nice fizzy swag how are you doing welcome to a cooking live stream but today is wednesday so i went to the comic book store and picked up my comics so let me show you my comics cheers chef cheers malad maladurgas picked up it eats what feeds it from uh, scout comics right as you know i love my independence right so independent comics is where it's at really uh there are some nice things happening with the big two as well but independence is fantastic right island kings how are you doing hey chicho how are you doing good doing good what's up master i don't know if i'm a master i'm a i'm a master of certain things <laughs> yes i'm the master of chicho that's what i am inkbot from image comics number one so both of these are number one there's a lot of number ones that came out to, uh, today okay inkbot from image comics we got uh, broken gargoyles from source point comics broken gargoyles okay chicho i just spent an hour and a half making an eight second <laughs> electronic loop i had the melody and drums done in 20 minutes and spent the rest of the time mixing and mastering nice i called it wonky wonky is good i'll link it in discord awesome awesome how much do you pay for it? Uh, these are expensive man they're they're like uh they range between three to five dollars a comic now uh canadian or us and then canadian you kick it up a notch uh, prices of new comics are too much this is from boom seven secrets okay boom from seven secrets again and number one okay. Ooh, cheryl how are you doing i got uh, i'm picking up batman from dc so it's on my pull list this is batman number 98 okay i'm picking up both variant covers so this is the regular cover and how are the strawberry one i mean jam uh the strawberry jam is fantastic so good here's the second cover i'm picking up uh, on my pull list uh firepower okay from image comics 
disillusioned how are you doing picking up monstrous from day one when it came out monstrous number 30 if you're not reading this if you're into comics you should be reading this monstrous is fantastic if you like amazing world building and uh dark and magic and brutality uh, most of the characters are um, female uh, leading characters abdullah chicho will this uh, dish make me cuckoo this will make you cuckoo this is sacred six okay spin-off from vampirella this is number two somewhat polis and this is from uh, dynamite okay al ewig from boom we only find them when they're dead right and this is number one and this is about uh it's uh space where uh humans i guess i haven't read this but i just know to write up on it. i ordered it uh where they're finding gods but all the gods are dead right so they're trying to find the live one who's the other clown girl alongside harley that's the new sort of joker's girlfriend uh what's her what's her name i forgot her name uh it's um i forgot the name i forgot the name that's true i have come to the realization that women are impossible uh impossible what do you mean you mean the women you've encountered are what does that mean <laughs> impossible for what <laughs> if there's something they don't want you don't want to do to them a punchline that's right the name of the girl is punchline right the new this character here and i do have her first appearance as well punchline this one is punchline birdie how are you doing good evening everyone and check out this one this is hellblazer number nine okay john constantly hellblazer number one is ending at issue number 12 i believe right and i picked up a copy of this last week and i ordered another copy because in this there is one page i read online where it rips the royal family a new one and talks about andrew and links it up to what's going on with lolita express so i ordered another one the comic store that i pull my comics from they have three stores the one i hear uh, only had one copy i grabbed it okay i put it on my pull list their sister company they only had one copy i got them to send it to me if i could get my hands or three more copies i would have bought three more copies of this okay because it's a powerful page powerful page ding bobber chicho life is so good as of late hope the same has been true for you and everyone here if not i hope your future will be better indeed hope everybody's future is fantastic okay let me put these aside okay yeah. should we leave the back door open with all the plants and stuff the sunroom you guys think about it you let me know if you want to know who i am i'm on patreon if you want to support this work patreon is a fantastic way to support this project patreon.com forward slash chicho c-h-y-c-h-o for those of you that are supporting this work thank you very much for the support okay i will continue to share as much as i can through that platform and you can follow the work i don't put anything behind paywalls everything's creative commons share and share alike what is a good starting point for reading comics thinking of dc or marvel uh it depends you could get into characters you already know but let us know and there's a lot of comic book people here in our chat let us know what type of stories you like and you'll get recommendations yeah i see no reason to close the door yeah it's not bright enough to distort the image so because that's our sunroom when it's really sunny it, it's like a white uh, in the background right we are live streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash chicho live, C-H-Y-C-H-O-L-I-V-E. If you want to participate in the chat, Twitch is where you want to be at. Okay. I do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on LO Minds Gap, VK Parlor, and Twitter for now. Okay. You can follow this work on those platforms. The link will be in the description of this video when we load it up to BitChute and YouTube. What else we got here? 
Usually when we don't have any visuals involved, we will be recording these discussions on a lapel mic, an external uh, recorder, and uploading the audio to SoundCloud. SoundCloud.com forward slash Chicho. So you can follow the work through podcasts. Okay. And they are available on your favorite podcasting platform, including Spotify. And we will be uploading this video to YouTube and BitChute. And you can support this work by joining, sharing, commenting, liking. And if you're on YouTube, you can support this work by joining YouTube membership. Okay, gang, that's the intro. <laughs> what do we got? Chicho, reigns the universe and beyond with his faithful companion, Yurk. <laughs> Together, they bring peace and unity throughout. No, that's a comic. That's a comic. Not sure if it's really based on reality, though, right? Hey, Chicho, what's cooking? Funky monkey. Let me tell you what's cooking. Let me take these guys down. And, and gang, thank you for the follows. Thank you for the subs. Um, if you're here on Twitch watching these live. <laughs> oh my God, YouTube is evil. I'm going to kick up the text here so I can take off my glasses. If I start missing text, because I will be missing text once I start doing cuttings and stuff like this. Uh, if there's anything directed towards me, please I'll just put a Chicho live, my name on there, and I'll try to catch it. And if I don't comment to something that you posted, uh, you won't want to comment on it, post it again if I don't see it. Uh, Chicho has more platforms than people of the 70s and 80s. <laughs> Salute everyone. This is lemon liqueur that we made on the previous liqueur stream. Taste fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Chicho has more levels than Mario level. <laughs> more platforms than what? It's really delicious, gang. Look at that. Delicious lemony taste to it. So nice, so nice. Okay. And here it is here. All right, this is what we made. We've, I've already gone through a little bit of it. I'm gonna top this up. I might add a little bit of sugar because it's uh, it's not that sweet, but I don't mind it. It's really nice. It's got a seriously delicious lemon taste to it. Okay. So I hope you have nice drinks going for you right now. Nice food, nice snacks. Yo, Chicho, how are you doing? Tyson, how are you doing? Tyson Terror 7. Ezkiel, how's it going? The guy that is getting away with animal abuse on YouTube. Who? What? I hope not. Lemons are the bomb. Lemons are the bomb. Guys, please don't talk about the crap. It's triggering for a lot of people. Yeah. We're doing a, we can talk about politics and stuff. Oh yeah, where is our politics? Here, here's our thing about politics. Check this out. Boop. Politics, little message regarding politics. Uh, our little message is, please keep politics and other heavy subjects to their respective streams. Because this is cooking, we're just gonna cook up some delicious food, All right? Let me show you the angles. Here's the angles that we've got. Oh, where are we? Boop. Okay. We got this guy here. Where we're going to do some chopping right now. And, and, and. Where's the other guy? And we got this guy here. Okay, that we're going to put the stuff in. Okay, once we start chopping them up. And uh, once we get everything mixed up. And the cuckoo recipe is online, gang. I didn't grab the, the link for it, unfortunately. But if you go Chicho Cuckoo. Uh, on YouTube or on BitChute, it should pop up. Okay, can we talk about the with how Greek Greeks the world are known for their friends? Those who want to have a discussion on the matter can for sure join the Discord. Indeed, you can join the Discord. There's a lot of discussion taken on there, and uh, people are talking about it. And today's I started this off mentioning to people we're doing a cooking stream but someone had requested that we do a little stream regarding nostalgia and uh, we had a couple of seconds on it saying that was a good idea to talk about nostalgia a little bit so open discussion regarding nostalgia i got my own opinions regarding nostalgia i'm not really nostalgic i i i 
I've gone through a phase where nostalgia doesn't mean crap to me anymore. I learn from the past, live in the present, look forward to the future. That's my train of thought. There are times where I go, oh, that was a great time. Oh, that was a great time. Sometimes when I get together with friends that I haven't seen for a while, they start talking about this and that. And uh, I entertain it, but I don't dwell upon that and spend the whole time talking about that. New experiences. It's about novelty. Learn about the past, learn from the past, live in the present, look forward for the future. That's my take regarding nostalgia. Okay, I want to show you what we're going to cut up now. One of the main ingredients in cuckoo is uh, um, lettuce, right? So, and this is the way I keep my lettuce in the fridge, and it keeps for a long time. Give your lettuce a wash, wrap it up in. You know hand towels but these are specifically towels that i have to put washed greens in and i put them in a plastic bag and i'll show you how fresh this looks right now these ones uh, i just did yesterday but they're it'll stay fresh like this for days upon days upon days okay so you can keep your greens all washed because one of the things I found out with people when they don't eat a lot of greens the reason they don't eat a lot of greens is because you usually need to wash them right and washing takes a little bit of time okay Chicho do you ever intentionally change your brain belief state through progressive relaxation and meditation in order to manifest things in reality um, for sure you can take out the manifest things in reality but relaxation meditation for sure but to me manifestation is doing like I don't sit there and go i want this to appear right i work towards getting this to appear right so i don't want i'm not in a believer on the manifestation part of things i'm a believer in getting things done just do it right or work towards it for instance you visualize things you want and imagine the future being on the present while in the theta state Look up Dr. Joe this uh, Banza. He's a specialist in brainwave uh, rewiring. I th I've looked at some some of that stuff, thing, Bobber. But for me, uh, if I'm if I'm thinking about doing something, I have a notepad, or I loop it, I loop it, I loop it, I get it going to a level where I can filter out the noise part of it, and then I just take notes and start doing it if I feel like it and that's the way I've been able to create all this content online that's what I do right that's the way I work uncharted days how are you doing 800 calorie diet wow birdie so going to enjoy this cooking stream <laughs> nice 800 calories is not much <laughs> yeah I think if you want things to change as Kiel says uh, make them change this of course doesn't apply to everything indeed indeed Knights of Old Comic Chicho uh, talk about color talk about colors that take you back to childhood for me early stabilized uh, star blazers Yamoto battle planet cartoons and soundtrack yeah talk about the color. for me um, I've always loved the color green so green to me has a little nostalgic feel to it uh, I'm taking a look at this thing gang I'm gonna chop these guys up and I can participate in the discussion a lot more once we get the cuckoos cooking up right right now I just have to do a little bit of cooking do <laughs> cutting and do the prep work until we can get the stove tops going with the cuckoo and then it's just waiting and just letting it cook right putting it aside but for me colors for sure like I love the color green maybe that's how I, why I got into growing food and stuff like this right so usually just cut it in half you get a bunch like this and then but for sure there are certain things that make you make me anyway uh, feel return to a certain time which was either happy sad uh, and whatnot like for me whenever I watch uh, cowboy bebop I it transports me to a time it gives me that feeling of brilliance uh, just because it is brilliant but it gives me the feeling of witnessing a masterpiece and to me one of the greatest feelings in life is witnessing enjoying masterpieces created by other human beings right and sometime in the future by 
machines, I guess. Right. So that was a bunch of lettuce. We're going to do a fair bit of lettuce. I want to cook up a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, that way we have enough food to eat for like four days or so. Or five. Yeah, about four days. I want to do enough cuckoo so we can have cuckoo for about four days. Right? We just have a lot of greens and we have another CSA coming. Uh, the Community Supported Agriculture uh, box coming today. So we're going to get more greens. And we have a lot of greens in the fridge. So I decided to make cuckoo to cook it all up. Here's another bunch. Cut it in half. Stick it together. For me, the most nostalgic thing in the world is Nintendo 64, particularly Legend of Zelda, Mario's Mask, and uh, Ocarina. Ocarina of Time. I've invested this uh, that section of my past to the point where it is no longer nostalgic. Awesome. And yeah, if you enjoy something in the past, uh, why not enjoy it again? And here's the kicker with nostalgia. There are, like, is there movies that you remember with fond memories uh, in a nostalgic format? Watch them again. A lot of those movies might be crap <laughs> right and since then you've watched a lot of a lot more amazing movies or shows that can replace the nostalgic feeling that you have stored up in you that's taking up space in your memory and your emotions with new sensations right like some of those old movies that you might have watched when you were a kid or blockbusters or something. You're like, oh, wow, that was a great movie. Watch it again. Some of them were pretty bad. Like, really. Iron Giant is amazing. I was obsessed as a young child. Dude, Iron Giant, I've watched, like, I don't know, six times, seven times. And it is magnificent every time. And most of the times... It makes your eyes a little teary <laughs> okay love wild wild west wild wild west have you seen it again dune labyrinth was uh playing at a bar once and i wanted to cry do oh do no labyrinth don't know labyrinth really labyrinth labyrinth is a great movie but it didn't want to make me want to cry and usually when i finish this is empty now we used up all the lettuce in there so i usually just hang it and because it's a little damp when you wash it you spin it dry it it's still a little damp you put it in the uh, the cloths right and the cloth absorbs the dampness and keeps the greens fresh right so since it's a little damp i just hang it let it um, let it dry out completely right vin diesel was the iron giant crazy crazy right Hey Chicho, light on no see. Nate, how are you doing? Nostalgia and teary eyed for anything Henson. Anything Henson? Uh, are we talking about Jim Henson? Like the Muppets and stuff? The Muppets are still amazing, or used to be amazing, the older Muppets. Any tips for the first time growing my beard out? Uh, last through the itchiness. You, you'll get itchy about 10 days in, a week in, and it'll last anywhere between 10 days to two weeks. Last through that and then let it grow, okay? And anybody that criticizes you, that says, oh, the beard looks awful, blah, 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 blah. And if you feel like growing it, maintain it, okay? There are a lot of people who are a little apprehensive of facial hair. They can take a fly in. Salute gang. The itchiness completely disappears. I've had a beer for a year now and can't feel it. Yeah. The itchiness goes away within three weeks. Longest. The itchiness is gone. Right? I find nostalgia the old style sweets. The old boil uh boiled one. Old sweets? Really? Here's another batch of greens. Okay. I'm just gonna pull this out and I have some greens in the freezer we're gonna use up too. Okay, let me show you what these guys are. 
I got some more lettuce here. Okay. So are we gonna use more lettuce? Maybe not. Maybe we won't use more lettuce. Okay. But actually let me bring this out. I'm just gonna put these guys in this. That way they're added away, right? So just put them in this. I can just put them in the dish where we wash the dishes. We can put them there. Now take a look at this thing. I got some Italian parsley. This is from our patio garden. So we're going to put some parsley in there, right? Is a little yellow here? No, it's not bad. It's good. Okay, some Italian parsley. That's from our garden. We got some mint. And we're going to use this too. And this is again from our garden. Okay, so fresh mint from our patio garden. We got some chives with bulbs. And this again is from our patio garden, right? So if you have a little garden, you can actually harvest your own food. Now we we're growing lettuce, but the lettuce, you know, we used up as butter lettuce is all eaten up. There's a little bit left, but this is chives with bulbs that I washed. And here we have from our local farm, we bought uh, beets, and these are beet tops, right? It's the, and the beets are connected here, right? So this is the beet tops, the beet greens. They really don't have a flavor per se, right? But it's greens, it's got nutrients, um, it gives it bulk, so it's food. Just because it doesn't have strong flavor, it doesn't mean it's not good to eat, right? So we're gonna put some of this in there too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop up some of these guys and we're going to mix it into the bowl. And once we get that done, I'm going to see how much we have. We might grab some of the greens from the freezer as well. Actually, I'm going to grab some of the greens from the freezer right now. Check this out. I want to show you what we got from the freezer. Chicho, I've been uh, reading a ton during the pandemic and I've read lots of stuff you recommend. Example, Chomsky, Wilhelm Reich, etc. Just want to say thanks for uh, Rec. Oh, my pleasure, pleasure uh, Funky Monkey. I'm glad you're enjoying the reads. Yeah, we're going to throw these guys in there too. I got some uh, green onions. Usually I throw green onions in the mix, but we had our own chives so just a little bit of green onion and this is something i do i go through the freezer every now and then whatever is left over like it's been there for a while you just eat it up right use it up so let's put that there and i got some dill okay just frozen <laughs> you just wisdom up the yin yang the yin yang is very important. Equally so, both of them, right? <laughs> Let's put this away. Now I'm just gonna give this a little mix. Okay. Because they were from the freezer, they're gonna get a little wet, but I want it mixed in there. I don't want it to be bunched up. Okay. So let's do that. Now let's cut up let's cut up let's put this knife here for now let's take this guy let's move these guys over okay and grab some of these and start chopping them up so let's take the chives first now this is a fair bit of chives it's going to give it a chivey flavor to the cuckoo which i'm totally okay with okay now i'm going to cut up the green part first so i'm going to chop off the tops chicho what is the difference between knowledge and wisdom uh, for me wisdom is knowing how to apply knowledge uh, knowledge and wisdom this question was asked the entire class when i was in college and most people didn't really have a good answer i don't want to say anything because i felt i didn't know yeah to me wisdom is being able to apply knowledge you could know something but if you don't know how to use it you don't know where it applies right then you don't know jack shit right? you you don't know how to, how to incorporate that into your life right 
So chives greens again. Take a look. This is the chive tops. I'm not sure if I'm going to put the bulbs in yet. I might keep the bulbs and just use them as something else. But beautiful. This is like our own chive. This is the best chives I've ever had. Okay. Our own chives grown in a box pot. I hear wise hands for the father says. Smells amazing, gang. Like, wow, smells so good, so good, so good. Nice. Let's dump this into the our green as well. Take a look. Here, I'll show you. Look at that. Like, fantastic. Like, amazing. And you get little little cuttings like this and you put them into soil and just give it water every day or every second day sometimes you might not even need to water it's raining just put it in the sun and you get this coming out why don't people more grow more more food at home more herbs and stuff i'm gonna take the the tops okay i don't think i'm gonna put them in okay take a look I don't think I'm gonna put them in. I'm just gonna put them in a bowl. Oops. Oh, oh, we drop one. I'm gonna wash it now. I'm just gonna put them in a little bowl. Put them on the side. We can cook this up with uh, eggs in the morning. Mm, it'd be so good, so good, right? And there's a little bit of dill that we had as well. Right. Hello, Imagined. Knights of Old Comic, Chicho. Any tips on getting your day going once up and maintaining daily rituals during this work from home quarantine period or any uh, or any time? Uh, Knights of Old Comic, for me, my daily ritual is I get up, I check my messages, I make some comments. I, I, Part of my daily ritual is catching up with the news because that makes me realize that I'm not alone okay we're not an island i'm part of a larger community and there's a struggle at play and uh, I, it's weird to say it's uh, i don't know like uh, for you guys there are certain things that make people feel good right there are certain things that make people appreciate their lives for me one of the things that makes me appreciate my life is knowing what's going on around the world and what my part in it is like i know that we most of us in the west or in certain other parts of the world right some people in the west are in trouble right in a big way but for me i know that i live a violent free life lucky to have access to food lucky to be able to grow food to eat good food have lived through some turmoil and know what certain certain curve balls that life can throw at you and when you come out of that you realize that life is way more than your little issues that you may have right so for me when i see problems in the rest of the world it just makes me be lucky feel lucky that i am where i am and that motivates me to do more okay now with the mint i'm going to take take it off the stems okay even though the stems are really they're not thick but we're not going to cook it long enough for this to break down so with the mint i'm only going to be using the leaf 
you don't want to put stems like this in cuckoo it just makes it hard to digest right and we're not going to throw all of this mint in there we're just going to throw some just to give it a nice mint flavor right and mint is always good and homegrown mint this is organic mint <laughs> grown by us in the in the patio like it's nutritious it's it's fantastic right young polax thankful for the small things not taking life too granted because there are a lot of people who have it worse much much worse and that doesn't mean you have to just not participate not take responsibility for certain things that are happening in our communities and globally right but it is it is a motivation to do better be more it it is it is something that gets the fire lit under your ass right to get off your ass to do things that you need to you need to do right that doesn't mean you don't have to take you know you can't take breaks every now and then you do have to take breaks otherwise life will knock you down right count your blessings not your problems count your blessings not your problems there's so many ways to say it eh? <laughs> i like that though count your blessings not your problems interesting uh, distinction lucky versus grateful lucky versus grateful you could be both lucky and grateful and really if we think about it how did you come to be where you are if you're in a good state of mind how did you come to be where you are if you're in a bad state of mind was it self-choice was it the world knocking you around was it choices that previous generations made was it just luck whatever it is try to figure out a way to improve it right so here's our greens right the mint i'm just going to throw this much in here so it's a handful i guess a handful of mint okay with regards to life as a whole the means to the end is the end the means to the end is the end aka the journey is the destination enjoy the flow and don't wait for something to happen to enjoy your life 100 percent. it's a ride as bill hicks would say and enjoy the ride okay This mint is, smells phenomenal. Nice. Let's throw this in. There's about this much mint, right? Maybe I'll throw in more after I chop up some of the beet, beet greens. Okay, let's give it a mix. Another nostalgia thing for me are old entertainment times. For me, uh, an old deck of cards, uh, they take me right back. Yeah, for me, it's Elder God. For me, comics in a big way. Comics in a big way. And comics are an amazing, for me, an amazing way to shut off the world. More so than movies. Uh, so when I read a comic book, I love to immerse myself in the in the world that's been created, right? And music nostalgia is huge, huge, huge. Like I mentioned this during a previous, I don't know if it was a previous ly lyric stream or the one before that, uh, where I talked about uh, Super Tramp, right? Breakfast in America. For me, that is one of one of the most nostalgic albums that i have when i listen to super trap and i love super trap super trap was one of the greatest rock bands in american history right without a doubt there are some people that don't like it 
Some person on the music stream on YouTube commented, oh, Chicho's fake. This is he. I mean, what do you expect from someone that loves Super Trump? I'm like, dude, <laughs> dude what? I didn't comment on the guy. Like, I'm like, what? Uh, there's haters or there's haters, right? But to me, Super Trump, Breakfast in America, and I still listen to it. I enjoy the music, but it does have that nostalgic feel to me where it was an innocent period, even though the lyrics are not innocent. It was an innocent period and it was romantic, right? Where the idea of the United States and traveling around the United States and hitting the road and going to little diners and stuff, to me, mainly because of the cover, I think, and, uh, you know, the lyrics as well. But to me, that is very nostalgic. Big tops, right? Nice. Let's throw this in. And you can put whatever greens you want into Kukru, right? Let's mix this in. I'm going to put more beat tops in there. I'm going to put all the all the beat tops that I showed you guys is going in here. Okay, why not? Because I know I'm not going to use it in anything else. Uh, like, if we're going to make soup, you can make it, you know, you can throw it in soups and stuff. But this is a fair bit of beat tops. And we're going to get more CSA stuff coming today. Chicho, I don't understand why I can feel long kinship and nostalgia when reading a golden age comic uh, time decades before I was born um, because of entertainment to a certain degree because that period like World War two reshaped the world right that period has been documented in entertainment for like from movies to TV shows to and a lot of amazing music came came out during that period right like look at the blues coming in from the early 19th century early 20th century i guess 1900s and rock and roll came out of that and we did go through a renaissance through that period right and it was the atomic age which is the age that we're in or we were in we're in a different period now i think Ah, oh, you have a Walkman, Elder God. It still works, but no bullets for it. Uh, you don't have any cassette tapes for it. Is that why? One thing with lettuce, lettuce gives Cuckoo a nice crunch. So we're, so will the the beet greens okay and it's got beautiful color by the way purple you add this to soups and stews uh it'll give it a nice purple uh, tint right so let's see so this is going to make a fair bit of cuckoo for us so and that's good i'm not going to add any more greens this is enough to feed us for a while and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this mint. I'm going to put it. Oh, here's a little bit more greens. I think uh, smell plays a big part in nostalgic feelings. Yeah. And smell is huge in food, right? So when I do cooking cuckoo, when I cut greens and stuff, it takes me to a time where, like, I don't know. I've been around it all my life. So it must be very comforting. Uh to me right without thinking about it this is greens and uh what do you call it mint and lettuce that's left i'm just going to put this in the fridge i'm going to put it in a bag you just put it in the fridge and use it up later right i have a little sip salute Lemon liqueur is fantastic. Strong. Strong lemon flavor. Like, you can't really taste the vodka too much. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this over here. We're going to bring the pot here, turn it on and let it heat up. And then we're going to add the flour and the eggs in this. Actually, before we add, do that, we're going to, uh, we need to cut some eggs uh, or break some eggs, right? So let me show you. I got, I don't know how many eggs do I have here. I don't think we're going to use all of these. So this is eggs we picked up from a farm. Fantastic. Local farm. Organic. Free run eggs and whatnot, right? So let me do that. I'm going to bring up a little thing for the... Yeah, sure. Let's put it in this. And I'm not going to break the eggs directly over this, over the greens, because if the eggshell goes in, I might have a hard time finding it. So I want to make sure the eggs that I put in here are egg, you know, there isn't going to be any eggshells going into it. Okay. So I'm just going to, going to break them into a pot or into a bowl. So that's two. Probably we're going to put eight eggs in this. These are on the smaller side. Three. I like my eggs to be a little bit darker yolk, but this farm we get it at, this is the color of the yolk. There's two farms that we try to get eggs from. First, we try the other one, and if they don't have it, we get this one. And it, this is ridiculously cheap as far as the eggs goes. We buy 30 eggs, right, this size, check it out, this size, 30 eggs for around, let's say, $10 Canadian, which is around $7.50. Eight dollars US, so thirty eggs for eight dollars US, fantastic price. So that's eight. Uh, now let's do eight. Let's see how many eggs. And whenever I deal with eggs, I sort of give my hands a little rinse. Cheryl, my strongest feeling of nostalgia are tied to old household items, heirlooms that also just hand me downs. Uh, that's it. Air rooms like the uh, smell of an old uh, enamelware pot. Enamelware pot on the stove. Uh, old metallic smell. Cool. Takes me right to my grandmother's basement where she uh, with uh, canned tomatoes. Ah, nice. For me, clothes is huge. Oh, yeah. Before we add this, uh, the eggs, we're going to put in flour and we're going to put in salt. Okay, now the salt I'm gonna use just just regular salt, salt ionized organic salt or whatever it is, right? And how much am I gonna put in? Oh man, I never measure. I go by by sight. So what is this? This is this is this is one eighth of a cup of a little holder. So let me check to see. I'm going to put one eighth of a cup. Is that too much? Man, I can't tell. I'm going to start with one eighth. I'm going to see. One eighth is too much. I'm putting in. Um, one, eighth. <laughs> one eighth would be. I'm putting in one ten. No, what, this is two thirds of one eighth. So two thirds of one eighth. Uh, Two thirds of one eighth. Two thirds of one eighth. Oh my god. Anyway, we can do the math later. Two thirds of one eighth. Okay. Two thirds of one eighth of a cup. Which should be two thirds of one eighth of a cup. Let's check it out. Mix it in. Mix in the salt. Because you want the salt everywhere. Greens require salt, right? Two thirds of one eighth of a cup. So you just multiply by one eighth. At least I haven't said back in my day oh back in my day no one said that yet let's mix this up oh this smells amazing you can smell the chives in this right away super good okay flour wise here's one this is uh, 
brown flour, right? Whole wheat, whole wheat flour. And this is again from the same farm we pick up uh, some of the greens from, right? Four teaspoons or just short of two uh, tablespoons. Two, so two tablespoons. Thanks, Cheryl. <laughs> Appreciate it. So here's one cup of flour, one cup of whole wheat flour. Okay. And I'm going to put, and you can just put whole wheat flour, white flour, it doesn't make a difference, whatever you want, right? I just have these available. And I'm going to put one cup of coconut flour. Okay. Might be a little bit on the heavy, uh, heavy flour side. You don't necessarily need this much. I'm going to put a little bit less than a cup. Like, that was three quarters of a cup, let's say. And I'm going to mix this. Okay. And what I want is the flour to get around on all the greens. Okay. And you don't want it to be too flour heavy. And you don't want flour to be, you know, stuck on the side of the pot of the of the bowl. Right? And this is going to be enough. Well, you'll see how much we end up getting. We're probably going to have at least three big pans full that we're going to cook. Okay. So that's good. Now I'm going to add the eggs. Okay. And you can add it all in one shot or mix it as you go, as you add it slowly. Mix the mixing easier when you add it, you know, one or two eggs at a time, right? And you get a feel for how the cuckoo is doing. You want it to be mushy enough to stick together. Okay. How did I learn to cook things like this? I from family, from my mom mainly. I learned how to cook from my mom, and it's just something we did at home. Uh, like it was encouraged at our house to start cooking early. And one thing I did when I was in my my main, I learned how to handle food uh, through family at university. You know, you're limited with funds, so you learn how to cook, right? When you're living in an apartment and whatnot, uh, you got student loans coming. Right? You're living on student loans and uh, university is expensive. You're not going to be going out to eat. So I learned there. But then in my 30s, I apprenticed under my mom for about five years. So we lived in the same, same, same home. So I made an intention to cook with her, to learn how to bake specifically and learn how to cook some of our traditional foods. And one year with the family, we did a farmer's market and we would do cooking every week for like a day and a half for a farmer's market period, which was basically mid spring to mid fall. So for like four months, five months, we were we had a farmer's market going with the with the family where we supplied uh, sort of organic salads. Mm certain stews certain uh, wraps and stuff uh, and lots of baking and i learned a lot during that period so this is really good take a look so this is the texture you sort of i sort of want so i'm not going to add any more eggs so that was eight eggs we added so i'm going to put these there's four more here i'm going to put these in the first so they stay fresh Get my hands a little wet. Now, let's put the eggshells here. We don't need the eggshells. Now we can get rid of these guys. Okay. I'll give these a wash in there. The beauty thing, um, beautiful thing about cooking cuckoo is it takes prep time, right? 
because you gotta wash the greens, clean the greens, and stuff like this. But once you got cuckoo greens washed with any food that requires greens, herbs, and stuff like this, once you have the greens washed, the cleanup is ridiculously easy, right? And it's easy to make the food. Chicho, a jack of all trades. Life is a ride. I took Bill Hicks comment that life is a ride seriously it's a ride enjoy it okay so let's bring this here let's bring down our first pot or our first pan and these are cast iron pans and cast iron is ridiculously good to use when cooking cuckoo okay it requires less oil if you're cooking in a traditional pan it's going to take a lot of oil okay in a cast iron pan it takes less oil and right now i'm just using uh, olive oil i can use you know we can use olive oil and i've used grapeseed oil you can use coconut oil and whatnot oh grapeseed oil take a look at this if you guys saw the picture of the grapes that i harvested uh from our patio so I put some in the freezer. We have some left over to eat, right? And this is uh, juice, sort of, it's, it's not jam, but I took a whole bunch of the grapes, I put them in a pot, I added some sugar, and it's like liquid syrupy um, grape juice, really. Concentrate. And what I do with this is, you know what? Take this, pour it in the glass, just a little bit, right? So this much, right? Remember, this is concentrated grape juice. Ding Bobber, thank you very much for the Twitch Prime sub. Hey, come here. And I just add water or soda. Mm, soda? No, we'll add water. Just add water and get instant grape juice. So good, so good. Salud. So homemade grape juice from our vines from the outside. <sighs> Very delicious. Chicho, AKA. The only content creator on Twitch I really watch in best time and for a reason uh, you do you do best. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it. We try, we try. We try to do good. We'll see where that takes us. Right? And by the way, gang, pretty soon I'm gonna start uploading all our math content to BitChute. Okay? That we have on YouTube that we started uploading to YouTube 15 years ago. Fain Forfent. Natural grape soda. Sounds damn good. Yeah, natural grape soda basically. So good. Alcohol, not yet, but I'm gonna with what the with the grapes left, there's a there's we got another bowl of grapes. We got a lot of grapes, right? I'm gonna because we can only eat so much, right? I have some in the freezer. I think Cheryl asked me about the freezer uh, with grapes a while ago. So here's a bunch of grapes that we put in the freezer, right? You can just pop, you know, pop them out and eat them. It's like candy, right? It's just like frozen grapes. Huh? It's like grape candy. Very yummy. And since this fell on the ground, but since it's frozen, you can just give it a rinse and eat it. But with a little bit less left over, I'm gonna take half of it, make liqueur, the other half we're gonna eat. Yeah, Cheryl, those are the right ones. It's still green, it's still tart. And the reason it's still tart 
I was gonna harvest them a little later, but we got a big fat squirrel in our neighborhood, and the big fat squirrel really likes hitting up the grapes. <laughs> we saw we saw the big fat squirrel once on video where we're doing a live stream. I think I uploaded that as a uh, as a as a single. So if you do Chicho Big Fat Squirrel, you might see that video. And uh, the squirrel was getting in their grapes, so we harvested as much as we could. Left them some down the steps, right? So the squirrel can eat those. Frozen grapes are incredible, really delicious. Grapes are one of my favorite fruits, but I've never tasted them frozen. Really good, really good. And if you if you go somewhere hot, like if you're going camping and stuff like this, you have the means to have things frozen. Man, take frozen grapes to camping. What a treat, what a treat. Now this element, I just heated it up slowly uh, from two out of 10, right? Two, three out of 10 just to get the oil in there, right? Now I'm kicking up the temperature on this one to about six out of 10, okay? Damn, I'll try them out sometime. Yeah, for sure, Johnny, try them out, so good. It's just, it melts pretty fast, right? But it's just that all of a sudden the cold and the, you know, these ones are tangy. So for these ones, you get cold and tangy flavor pop in your mouth, right? Uh, if you can get sweet, you get sweet. Grape juice. Man, I end up getting takeaway like every, oh dude, bureaucracy kills, don't do it. I used to eat out a lot at certain points in my life. And then you realize why. First of all, it's crazy expensive. It's not healthy. Uh, it's a good social thing. I think I was doing it mainly and that's the sound you want. When you put it in, you want it to sizzle a little bit. And then you flatten that out. Okay. Now you can make these thick or you can make them thin. I make them about medium size. Okay. And we're not gonna get two elements going yet. Usually you can cook up a little bit just to see how the salt content is. But I'm gonna cook this up because we're not in a rush, right? We're gonna cook this up. And then I'm gonna taste it just to make sure the salt content is good enough. If it's not, if it's not salty enough, I'm gonna add more salt to what's left here and make it saltier, okay? And then that's all you do. You just sort of let it cook. When you put it in at first, you have the lid on. So I don't know how long it's going to take. I have it at six. It varies a little bit. So we're going to keep an eye on it. You'll see how it works out. And then we're going to cut it into quarters. And then we're going to flip it. So the other side gets cooked up. When you flip it, you remove the lid. Okay. You'll see the process. Ah, cornelian cherries, indeed. I'm walking past the cornelian cherry tree. Uh, like, during my walks, I walk past the cornelian cherry tree, so I keep you track of it at least three times a week. And they're starting to get red, and they're going to be ready for a little bit of harvesting next week. So I'm going to hit it up next week. <laughs> Can't wait. Cornelian cherries are hard to come by in my part of the world, and they're amazing. Lark, how are you doing? Hello, cooking some delicious food, I see. Nice, yeah. Yeah, looking forward to it. I haven't had the... Uh, cuckoo is a, a stable diet, like, for us, for me, anyway. I cook a lot of cuckoo, I eat a lot of cuckoo. It's the way I get a lot of greens coming in. Um, and it's, it's... It's just nutritious. It's super good. See death 420 how are you doing? I didn't realize you were here as well. Welcome to no live stream. Fun. Fun. So nostalgia, what else nostalgia? Now it's just waiting game. We can drink. 
Look at this. I already took half of this down. Actually, more than half. Because this thing funnels up, right? Salute, gang. so good organic lemons organic cane sugar it's not organic vodka but it's vodka good vodka getting the oils from the lemon skin into the into the liqueur so good wow that's addictive maybe we'll bring in a another liqueur and i'll show you another liqueur we made a i made a whole our liqueur cabinet uh is not able to hold all the liqueurs i've made this year so i've extended it into the table beside it so i think in the next liqueur video when we do it beside the cabinet there's going to be a little bit of different angle and we might do a little bit of taste testing we'll see and then a nostalgic reminder is old mobile phones. Oh, wow. I actually have my first mobile still. Really? Wow. I have my first pager still. From the late 1980s. I actually won a pager. Should I tell you my pager story? Let me tell you my pager story. I was at a club with a couple of friends, a couple of girls. And this was a period where we were partying a lot. Uh, me and these two girls were really good friends and we went out clubbing and stuff like this we were in a club and we went we were club hopping and we went to this club and we stuck around for a while and they had some kind of draw or something and somehow my name got put in there and we're leaving the club as we're leaving the club they call out my name and we're like what and if you're clubbing you're in a certain state of mind so we were in a certain state of mind i was like what what's going on my friends were like oh my god you you want something you want something you gotta go get it i got oh, dude i'm not gonna what are you guys talking about oh go get it go get it go so i went up and they gave me a pager i didn't have a cell phone and i didn't have a pager i didn't want that mobile connectivity yet and it wasn't that popular at the time it was a little bit but not that much a mid mid 1990s late 1990s mid 1990s really uh 96 97 or something right uh and i got a pager and once i got a pager i activated it and i paid ten dollars a month canadian and it was fantastic it was really good it had a little tick 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 ticker tape thing coming along <laughs> and then it said some people would it would say message left or it would just punch in a number you could call back right or people would just punch in their number nice ever try portuguese uh, gin gin ha it's sour cherry liqueur and it's delicious no i haven't tried it sour cherry liqueur would be amazing i gotta make some sour cherry liqueur we have cherry liqueur here made but not sour cherry liqueur let's put this on here nice this is cooking nicely take a look at this you can see the oil around the cuckoo like it's curling, like bubbling. That's a good thing. Now, what I did was kick it down to about a four because what I wanted to do is get the pan hot because these are cast iron pans and then kick it down, right? Stabilize it. So sitting at four right now, okay? Salud. We're also waiting for the CSA to come, the box. I'm gonna come right back because they don't knock on the door when they drop off the box of veggies and fruits that we have or veggies mainly right not some fruits as well sometimes they leave it in front of the door so I have, I'm just gonna check come back if it's there I'm gonna bring it here we're gonna take a look at what we got from the CSA Yes. 
<laughs> check it out, check it out. We got a box and it's, uh, here, I'll tell you who these guys are. They're local people. Sanich Organics, right? Big taste from small farms, right? So let me put this here. Check on the cuckoo and then uh, we'll take a look at what, what's there. As soon as we flip the cuckoo, we'll have time to take a look at it, okay? And if you want to know what a CSA is, it's called Community Supported Agriculture. And it's, um, we actually have an ASMR math playlist for it, where we looked at the mathematics of food and farming. So if you do Chicho Mathematics of Food and Farming, it'll take you to a playlist where we have a whole bunch of videos regarding a CSA. I had some friends that uh, had a CSA on the East Coast. Um, and uh, they ran me through during that period. And at that time, I didn't, I wasn't part of a CSA. We just became a part of the CSA last few years. Let's check this out. And when you want to flip it, take a knife and go around the cuckoo, right? So you free it up on the side. And you can lift it up a little bit. And if it's sticking, then it's ready to be flipped. Right, so let me put this guy here. And what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna cut this into quarters. And when you're cutting it, you know it's ready. I wish should have probably added more oil, but that's okay. Put that there. Just get a spatula. Our spatula is broken. And that's okay. And you want, when you're flipping it, you want a knife or a fork as well. And it's all crispy on this side, right? Now, as soon as you flip it, add oil. Okay. Just go down the crack. It's an oily food, but use good oil. Uh, and it's fantastic. Okay. Chicho, what sort of stuff uh, did you cook at university? Or what dishes would you recommend? that are simple rice was a huge part of our food right cooked a lot of rice had eggs uh, salmon if we could get it salmon was easy uh, easy to cook uh, meat dishes stews and stuff like this and one of the things we did whenever we went home because uh, i was living away from home right in the different we were family was in Vancouver I was going to university in Ontario like it's huge right but whenever I went home back home for Christmas or summer and stuff like this when I was going to university my mom and we would help as well but my mom did everything she would cook up a whole bunch of different uh, dishes Armenian and Persian dishes freeze them okay I was lucky man right freeze them and then the day when we're leaving she, we would bring out a box and place all the frozen food in a box like this and we would put that in as one of our luggages and it's frozen and then when we got to the other side it's still frozen right it's like five six hours later it's a block of ice right we had a deep freezer at university so and by the way if you go into university if you're living in an apartment right if you're on budget get yourself a deep freezer Right? It doesn't have to be huge. Get yourself a deep freezer because if you find meats on sale, you can buy a bunch and put it in the freezer and then use that up. And that's one thing we did, right? So we shopped, we were frugal, right? You only have a certain amount of money. You're frugal 
you buy things on sale you put them in the deep freezer and with the package what we came the care package we came home with from my mom we would go to her apartment and put it in the deep freezer and we have and we wouldn't eat that every day it was a special thing like once a week or twice a week we would grab one a uh, you know a little box like this of container like this a frozen stew and we heat that up and we cook rice so rice was a huge part of our diet yeah Cheryl awesome 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 right very lucky so as soon as it's cooked for a little bit of time right on one side you can just cut it into eight right so take each of the quarters and cut them that way the inside of the cuckoo's cook right and it's got enough integrity to uh what do you call it stay intact right? it's cooked enough to stay intact and let it cook for a little bit you want it to become crispy right i'm going to bring out a fork let's see Right. It's gonna cook a little bit more, right? So let it cook more. Oh yeah, we're gonna look at the CSA. Actually, let's look at the CSA on the next pan that we put in. Maybe we'll just use this pan to cook things up, right? Because we have one and a half more pans to do. Okay. Rice and beans is all all you yeah, and we ate a lot of beans as well. Tons of beans, right? And when you're cooking beans and you cook a big pot right so red beans we ate a lot chickpeas we ate a lot white beans we ate a lot as well rice beans onions you need onions um, garlic important uh, what else bread we had bread we had cheese honey I almost never eat beans uh, am I missing out yeah you are bureaucracy kills right now personally I'm not eating legumes legume beans or legumes because my body's saying you went a little too ballistic with beans stop eating beans for a while so i'm not eating beans not too much anyway but beans was a huge part of the diet and it's if beans basically provide the world with a tremendous amount of protein it's a major protein source for a huge chunk of the world right i bet jalapenos would go well with that oh possibly i've never tried jalapenos with this birdie that's a good idea <laughs> I like that idea we don't have any jalapenos right now jalapenos would be great so elder god the two together have all the essential amino acids really rice and beans cool you need flavoring as well like we would have uh, mint dried mint as herb as far as herb goes we didn't have too much we had uh, dried mint we had salt pepper garlic of course uh, dill is good with fish salmon and stuff and we would make uh, rice dishes with raisins and onions or onions and uh, dates cooked up and i've shown you guys uh, what that dish is like super delicious super delicious no meat. we would add uh, meat as well but very little meat for us right like when we were cooking uh, beans, we cook beans and then we would fry up onions and put chop up meat. It's mainly stewing meat, right? We wouldn't buy a steak and eat a steak. Stewing meat and you cut that up, fry it up with the onions, right? And salt and pepper and uh, mint and stuff like this. And then um, you mix it in with the beans a little bit whenever you're eating and the rice and you're all set, right? nice this is good so i have just a tray here so i'm going to put all the cuckoo in here okay let's do this lift this up and when you put them down don't put them flat you want to stand them sideways so they don't get squishy you want to stand them like this in a tray that you're gonna you know you're placing everything in okay 
and usually stagger them. I'll show you. Okay. That way they're breathing, they cool down. I'll show you as soon as we empty this thing and get rid of all the little grains here. Okay. And before we put the next one in, we're gonna we're gonna add more oil. Okay. Let's add a little bit more oil. Greens takes oil. Uh, my cuckoo, it's uh, got lettuce, uh, chives, mint, uh, dill, green onions, and uh, beet tops. Okay. And uh, parsley, Italian parsley. I could have added more parsley, actually. Italian parsley or parsley is is really good. So is cilantro. Cilantro is fantastic, but I didn't have any cilantro. Okay, I should have got some cilantro. And when you do this, put it in. Here, let me show you this. Take a look. So you just put the cuckoo like this in a, in a tray. That's not going to work. Do it this way. Check that out. Oatmeal is good. In in the mornings, yeah, for sure. In the mornings, oatmeal and whatnot. And, oh, I was going to taste it to see if the salt content was good on it. This is what happens when you do too much in one shot, right? So let's have a little taste. See what the salt content is like. Hot, hot. Looks so yummy. Yeah, it's good. Cuckoo is amazing. Salty. Okay. So, if I was going to add salt to the amount that we made, I would have maybe made it one sixteenth of a cup, not two thirds of an eighth of a cup. So, one sixteenth of a cup would be salty enough and it would be salty. Okay, but it's not bad, pretty yummy, very yummy. Hot, 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 hot. Oh yeah, an egg, yeah, 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 sorry. Uh, yeah, 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 it's got eggs. Sorry about that. Yeah, the eggs keeps it together, right? Let me show you what we got in the CSA. Let me show you what we got in the CSA. Had to get a get a stool. So we pull it out and see. Wow, the cuckoo's cooking. And they give you a recipe sheet for what you can do with the greens and herbs that they gave you. Okay, so it's just a box. And then every Wednesday we leave the empty box outside and they replace it with a box they put stuff in. Okay, so take a look. This is what we get. All right? So let me show you what we got. Ooh, strawberries. We got kale, right? Fantastic. Let me put... Oh, here's the beet tops. I knew we were gonna get more beets, right? That's why we cooked up all the beets. So these are the beets, and we haven't cooked up the beets from the beet tops that we used yet. 
And beets, usually, we usually keep for a while and then cook them all in one shot because it takes a fair bit of energy to cook up beets, so might as well cook them all in one shot, right? So beets, beet tops, kale. We got organic strawberries, because this is an organic farm, right? Or they grab their stuff from organic farms. So fresh organic strawberries, very nice. Very nice. They look great. We've been a lot of strawberries this year, right? We got uh, green onions or chives? Not chives. This is. Uh... This is green onions. Nice. Nice green onions. Look at that. Nice bundle of green onions. Nice. Right. We got half a broccoli, right? Not bad. We got nice carrots, two different color carrots, right? Purple and orange. And we get a bag of salad, right? So this is like salad greens. Take a look. Nice, nice. And what we end up doing, we just put these in the fridge. Uh, and I'll do that after we finish the live stream. And uh, munch away on them, right? And then next week, we get another box. And tell you the truth, it's a lot of greens. We're having a hard time keeping up with eating them all. That's why I'm freezing some of them and whatnot. And we still have a lot of greens in the fridge. And we do buy, we do go to a farm and buy uh, more greens. Like the lettuce uh, that I used for this, because we didn't get, uh, we haven't been getting huge, uh, what do you call it, heads of lettuce or anything like this from these guys. You know, we bought lettuce from a local farm and whatnot. Okay, so let me put these guys here. And I'll take care of that later. Okay. Let's make sure our cuckoo's not burning. And it is the times we live in. Wash your hands after you touch stuff that has come in from the outside and whatnot, right? Before you deal with food. Okay. So let's take a look at this. Oh no, this is still good. No, we let it cook a little bit longer. Nice, we didn't let it burn, that's good. That's good. More cuckoo, cuckoo. Uh, walnuts in the cuckoo? I tried it once. Um, it wasn't bad. But when you put walnuts in the cuckoo, you're very much committed to eating walnut and cuckoo. Right? I like the greens just to be greens. Because I eat a lot of walnuts anyway, so I don't necessarily need them to be in my cuckoo. This is like crazy delicious. Oh my gosh. Very nice. Look at that. Look at that goodness. Very yummy. I can smell it through my screen. Nice. Rendell, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome. Salute, brother. Lemon liqueur. I haven't had cuckoo in a long time, though. Oh. Do you know how to cook it? At Troy? 
let's cut it. Super good. Take a look. I'll bring it close. Look at that. Very nice. I gotta add oil to this, right? Once you add the oil, give it a little shake. Make sure the oil and tilt it a little bit and stuff. Just make sure make sure the oil gets all over the bottom, right? I haven't tried making it, but my parents used to make it with lots of herbs, eggs, some walnuts, and uh, zerish, zerish, oh zerish. <laughs> zerish. This is called uh, uh, barberries or something like this. Fantastic, fantastic. Take a look. Here, I'll show you. It's, Persians use this a lot, right? Major staple in Persian food. Barberries or something like this. You know what, we got a little bit left here. I'm gonna put Zeresh in it too, okay? Just because you brought it up. And Armenians, we usually don't put Zeresh in there, but I'm Armenian Iranian and I've had cuckoo with Zeresh in it. So in honor of a Troy, let's do this little bit that we have here. It's not going to be a full pot. We're going to do a little pot of Zeresh Kuku. And this thing is amazing. And this goes amazing with rice. You cook it up with rice. And if you cook it up with rice, you can fry up the onions and uh, uh, onions and uh, raisins in another pan and mix it in together. And it goes amazing with a lamb dish. So good. Very nice. Very nice. It's barberries, I believe. B A R berries. Try that out. Rendell, doing well, brother. How are you, Chicho? Doing fantastic. I plan on making a lemon liqueur myself very soon. Do you have much left? I seem to like it's. Uh, it is my go-to. But check this out. The one I had was. This is the lemon liqueur there isn't vodka left in it we're just basically taking a lemon and mixing it with water so this was the previous lemon liqueur jar that i had which was in the jar i'm about to show you right and i decided to start a new batch right and what i'm drinking right now is from the new batch because the essence of the lemons was basically gone this is the new batch we ended up making in the last lemon liqueur and this was to the top so i drank about this much i'm going to pour myself another one Super delicious, super delicious. Okay. But before we do that, let's do this. Let me make sure the cuckoo, everything is going okay. And what were we up to? Oh yeah, we gotta check the cuckoo. So what we wanna do is just check to make sure this thing's not burning. Ooh, getting close. And what I'm gonna do right now is cut it. Okay. Cut it into your eights. Make sure it's good. Mm, get in there. A little bit more, a couple more minutes. While we're waiting for that, let's put a little bit of Zeresh in this. Mix it all up. 
And that's the next batch that's going with my lid for the Zurich. Oh, there it is. Chicho, could you substitute uh, uh, cranberries for Zurich? Uh, you could probably, yeah, because it's tart. Uh, but cut up the cranberries smaller because the Zerish is really small, so it distributes nicely. It, it would have a similar flavor. It would, uh, Cheryl. Okay, this is good. So we transfer. Very nice. Look at this. Look at this goodness. So nice, so nice. Oh yeah. This one's gonna fall apart, but that's okay. By the way, here, I'll show you one other thing as well. Watch this. If your cuckoo sometimes falls apart, right? Break it up. And cook it dark it becomes like burnt greens and it sucks up the oil really nicely and it's got an amazing flavor like it becomes super crispy right it's like if you make um, if you're a meat eater if you make uh, like chicken barbecue it's like the, <laughs> the what should we call it the skin of the chicken barbecue right so you can do that as well now what we're going to do is just mix this up. The zerish with the with whatever greens we got left. Okay. Actually, I can get rid of this guy because I got a spatula here I can use. Nice. This is going to be good. Thank you for the recommendation uh, or the reminder, a choice put Zeresh in here. I haven't made it with Zeresh for like, I think I've only made it with Zeresh like once. Ooh. Cranberries are amazing. Do you use them in cooking a lot? Uh, Cheryl, if yes, do you have any recommendations? Yeah, cranberries are fun and so good for you, cranberries. Now what I could do is add a little oil in this and it becomes like crazy oily crispy green. And let's do it. Drinking while cooking might motivate me to do it. Indeed it would. Indeed it would. myself another lemon liqueur unfortunately I can't do it on camera it's too dangerous we do it on a liqueur string nice. I'll put ice in it as well but let me show you the color on it let me show you the color on this Look at this, look at this. Just beautiful, just here. Let's see if we can put a little light up behind this. Look at that, look at that. Lemon liqueur. Man, welcome, welcome. Yes. This 
needs to be refilled. So we'll put this guy here. Salute everyone. I hope you're having a fantastic, fantastic day. I made some red grape liqueur recently that turned out fantastic. Planning on making strawberry next. Nice. I'm gonna make some green grape liqueur uh, today as well, I think. <laughs> nice. This is gonna be so delicious. <laughs> now I need a drink, Elder God says. Is that crispy enough? Mm. Almost. No, I've never made sake. Nice little comic. I love sake though. Sake for us Armenians is like watered down vodka. I've had uh, like I've had different nationality friends that I've hung around with throughout my life, like different periods, and. There's a period that I had a lot of Korean, a lot of Japanese friends. And when we go out drinking, uh, Koreans can't hold their alcohol. If you're a Korean, I'm, I'm sorry, but relative to the Ar Armenian and the Japanese, you guys get drunk crazy fast. So Koreans would get knocked out and the Japanese, surprisingly, they can drink a lot, right? But not as much as Armenians can drink. And we used to have a lot of sake. And it was fantastic. Saki and sashimi. Saki and sashimi. Saki and sashimi. And constant, constant. Good times, good times. That is nostalgia. That is nostalgia. Cheryl, I do, Elder God. They're excellent filler in baked goods. Oh, yeah, baking cranberries. Okay, this is going to go into the pot. This is perfect. Into the tray where I'm holding everything. And we're gonna put more oil and make cuckoo with zereshk. Okay. Now we're gonna put oil on there. Oop, gotta open up the lid. Give it a little swirl. Make sure the oil gets around. And unfortunately, I don't have too much to fill the whole pot, so I'm gonna try to arrange it so it's a relatively legit thickness I might have gone overboard with the Zeresk, but it's okay. You just mold it, really. All right? Tighten it up. Nice. And put the lid back on. Nice. This guy, you can see the cuckoos here. Right? Excellent. I've also added, this is regarding cranberries, I've also added fresh to meatloaf. Ooh, with meatloaf would be amazing. Uh, odd, I know. And of course, uh, relish. You really can't put them with anything sweet. Dried cranberries have a ton of added sugar, so I don't use them very often. Okay, okay. Wait a moment, but no, at least. One thing I've done with cranberries is instead of um, with rice, the dish that I've shown with uh, onions, frying onions and you add either raisins or dates and you fry up dates and the raisins you can do it with cranberries I've done it with cranberries and it's absolutely fantastic really good wait see I see an Armenian versus British drinking contest <laughs> oh elder god I'm a lightweight now I'm a lightweight now thank god I'm a lightweight now really people have asked me what would I do different yeah in my early 20s I would drink less okay just to let you know 
Salut. I might try it with meatloaf then. I love using them when, when I bake. Nice. Butlins. I won. At Butlins? You want a drinking mm -hmm. contest at Butlins? Well, I don't know what Butlins is, but it sounds serious. <laughs> Fun. Oh, I'm so glad my lemon liqueur is back. Really. My lemon liqueur was basically done for a few months. Rendo Chicho, I might try making a date liqueur Ooh. with licorice root. Ooh, your thoughts. Yeah, I think you probably don't even have to add any sugar. I don't even, uh, depending on the type of dates, I guess. Date liqueur would be really good, actually. With what? With uh, what else did you say? With what? With licorice, oh, licorice. I gotta make some licorice. I love the flavor of licorice. Try it out, Rendell. If it works, let us know. I'll do it as well, right? Kebabs. With a pub on every corner in the UK, we have the drinking game on block. On lock, yeah. I think in Europe, uh, it's the Czech that drink, uh, that has, have the highest consumption of alcohol per capita in Europe could be in the world no it's the holiday camp you worked at sure around just keep in you go regarding cranberries just keep in mind that they have a lot of water dates have a lot of water so adjust times accordingly oh this is cranberries oh and they always have them on sale after the holidays you can buy a few bags quite inexpensively and freeze them forever okay maybe just until late summer yeah and cranberry jam is amazing i've made cranberry jam before you just cranberries add a little bit of sugar and it's it's nice tangy jam it's really delicious rendo yeah i was thinking no sugar as well i think dates go real well with uh licorice or cinnamon yeah with, with cinnamon yeah i've never had dates and uh, licorice I don't have licorice too much in my diet. I should include that more. Elder God, the Czechs are crazy. The from last time I looked, which was late 1990s, was uh, the Czechs were the highest consumption of alcohol per capita in Europe, and it could be the world. Pomegranate liqueur. I've made pomegranate liqueur. Pomegranate liqueur is amazing, hands down, fantastic. I still have some but I miss pomegranate season this year I was sick I was taken out for about six weeks beginning of January okay take that however way you want I don't know what it was the reason that went like this because the steam had piled up on top of the uh, lid and I when I tilted it, it fell over, right? When you're making cuckoo the whole pot, it doesn't do that. Sound is crazy though. Sound is cool. Let's check this out. Take a look. Awesome. Just cut it in half and give it a flip. <laughs> in Prague oh my god the beer in Prague is so good is it Randall I don't know I was in Prague I can't remember uh, this is in late 1990s I was there we drank a lot but can't remember if it was phenomenal or not it's just a blur that's not nostalgia that's more blur salute everyone You were in, in Prague in 1998? I was in Prague in 1998. I'm pretty sure I was in Prague in 1998. Oh my God, Elder God. Maybe we were right beside each other and we didn't even know. <laughs> what a crazy time. It was a crazy time to be in Prague, I think. 
Look at this. Nice. It was the same trip I went to Ireland and took um, pictures of the murals in Ireland. Super cool. Super cool. Here, let's try some of this fried up. Oh, this stuff is good. Look at this. Crispy greens. Cavalry, you were there in 1998 as well? Wow, wow, wow. Super cool. That World Cup was um, France, wasn't it? 1998 World Cup was in France. Or was it just France won the 1998 World Cup? I can't remember who won the 1998. Maybe it was 2002 where Zidane did that which headbutt. All 37 viewers were there in 1998. <laughs> nice. That's why we're all here. Coincidences. These poor cuckoos aren't cuckoo shaped. That's okay. Oh, I forgot to add the oil. Look at this, look at this. Give it a shake. I'm gonna turn off the pan. Right? It was in France. Headbutt happened. Headbutt happened in France. Okay. Zidane, he shouldn't have done that. Right? He cost them the final. But, I like Zidane. Okay, these guys go. These guys are done. Thank you for the recommendation of putting Zerishk in there. Ooh, this one fell apart. Okay, let's pull those out. turned off the tea is going I still got tea going on here so we want to turn off this one camera now which one is that one and that one nice and this is our cuckoo gang Take a look. we just made this much cuckoo here let me turn off this camera as well The other guy should have kept uh, his mouth shut, in my opinion. Uh, indeed, indeed. But Zidane fell for it, right? It was a ploy. Right? Take a look. Nice. So that's enough cuckoo to feed two people for three, four days, right? And it'll keep for three, four days, five days, six days, right? Cuckoo keeps, right? You want to keep it cool in the fridge, uh, but it's fantastic. And I'm going to try some of the one with the Zereshk as well. Let's check it out. I haven't had Zereshk cuckoo forever. My God. Is France the champions right now? Not the World Cup. The European are the European champions. Mm. 
Mmm. The tanginess. Oh yeah. Very nice. Very nice. I think from now on I'm gonna make it half half. World Cup 2018. They won the 2018 World Cup? France did? Man, I can't remember. That seems like so long ago. Really, that seems like so long ago. I wonder why Zeresk is so unknown in the West. It grows wild in both North America and Europe, but almost nobody uses it. Yeah, we have. Um, and Zeresk is not well known. Either is Somar. And Somar is a flower of a tree that grows wild in where I am. Like you can you can go to a somach tree in my part of the world and the flowers are big like this and you can just take the flowers and they're very they're full of vitamin c so good so good right somach and zirish are two things and dude a troy there's two fruits that i want from iran one is uh, konar konar is specifically from southern iran it grew up and grew in the desert it's crazy good and the other one is zolzalak <laughs> so good yeah world cup is every four years so 2000 i can't even remember 2018 world cup i don't think i watched too much of it i think there was i don't know i can't remember oh are there pl places that sell so much there cheryl good 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 for us where i am you usually have to go to a persian store well that's the only place i know how to get it crafter apparently in the years that there's a world cup the average exam results is two percent less in belgium <laughs> i believe it <laughs> i can tell you this in canada when there is no hockey right there was one year that hockey players the hockey season closed in canada that i've been since i've been teaching high school math right and that was in mid 2000s i believe right mid to early 2000s mid 2000s i can't remember exactly when right the hockey players had disputes they didn't sign a contract they went on strike for one year my students marks in mathematics went up 20 percent okay i had students that were getting like barely passing they didn't care they, they, they had no future in sciences or anything like this that one year changed their lives i had one student that was barely passing math the previous year and that year when they went on strike he ended up getting 80 percent and by the time he got to grade 12 he took chemistry 12 physics 12 math 12 graduated got into engineering at university if that hockey strike did not happen that year i think he was in grade 9 or grade 10 i think he was in grade 10 right when he was in grade 10 if that hockey strike didn't happen he would have never become an engineer ever right the hockey strike changed his life professional sports destroy many people's lives they also make many people's lives but people have to get their priorities right okay we should buy sports crafter says no we can we got to stay healthy sports is incredibly important it's good for other skills too social skills it's good for um stri strategic uh, teaching strategy and tactics and stuff like this yeah really that kid man that family like really the bond we built that they saw what happened to their to their child and uh, yeah rewarding very rewarding Zazalak, oh my god it's been so long since i had it last time i had it was on a trip in esfahan yeah it's fantastic it's fantastic i haven't had Zalzalak for 40 years a troy please somebody grow Zalzalak in north america so we can buy it in the grocery stores or just bring seeds in here and grow it and put it online and let me know where you can buy it online and i will buy it online okay anybody knows know where you can buy zolzalak or konar online zolzalak really zolzalak online and have it shipped to canada this is 
<laughs> this is going out on YouTube, be chewed right now, anywhere, right? Please let Chicho know where he can buy Zalzalak online so he can eat it after 40 years. <laughs> My man, Kashar was send me some. Oh, Elder God, dude, you hook me up. <laughs> Salute everyone. Fantastic. And that's our cuckoo. And we took a look at our CSA. I showed you my grapes. Grape juice, soda. Look at that. Look at the color of that. I'm not sure why it turns purple. The grapes are green, right? I add organic cane sugar, which is sort of brownish color. So I guess the brownish color of the organic cane sugar and the grapes gives it a pink, pink color. And it's crazy refreshing so tangy so tangy very nice very nice this is our last stream for the set nice yeah beautiful color beautiful color yeah very lucky to have the grapes growing outside it's nice and sunny now very nice and sunny the the plants are loving it the plants are loving it how do you press the juice i i didn't need to press it i put the grapes in the pot right cook them up and the skin the juice separated it these grapes don't have seeds i didn't i don't know what what type of grapes there are but they're they don't have any seeds so um what do you call it? actually I, I, not true i did do something so i cooked it up the skin separates from the meat inside and it became juicy and i took a sieve I took this guy right I put it in a pot in a bowl one of these glass bowls or metal bowls right and I poured it over this and then took a spoon and squish 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 and I'll show you the paste let me show you the paste and I use a paste uh, like a jam style with uh, because it's tart it's, I didn't add too much sugar uh, it's really good here let me show it to you goes amazing with yogurt okay Take a look. here I'll, I'll bring a spoon so that's the skin of the grapes right and I just add this you know if I'm eating toast just add you know with I add a little bit of honey maybe right and uh, sometimes not on pancakes is amazing here let me show you one other thing I did too take a look this is pancakes I made a couple of days ago and I toast it up and I heat it up and eat it right so this is my pancake dough that we've made pancakes before you know what how I make it right pretty simple and I took some of the paste and mixed it in with the pancake dough and this is grape <laughs> grape uh, skin pancake so it's like great pancakes and it has that flavor of the grape in there so when I'm eating this I take some of the paste as well with honey and cheese put it on the so I try to so I try to use as much of the harvest as possible right it's just amazing healthy for you saves you a ton of money right and this you can just eat and it tastes fantastic right apparently there's a place in california that sells zolzalak trees <gasps> crafter i'm not sure if they would ship towards canada oh what it, you, it's got to be Cal uh, yeah it would have to be California. There's lots of Persians there, right? I'm gonna look into this, man. The only ship in January. The only ship in January to Canada, Crafter. I can't see it coming to Canada, but I wonder if there's a 
Man, I would love to get my hands on a Zazzle Act tree. Crafter, if you remember, please post a link in our Discord page under farming or something. Or send me a link. I'll look it up. I'll follow it up to see if I can get a cutting or something. Of course, it's in California. Only Persians would grow, grow these trees. <laughs> Like, what a delicacy. Zazalak. Wow, wow, wow. Salut. Gang, should we call the stream? Great discussion, great fun. We talked a little bit about nostalgia, but I think uh, we treated it the right way, right? Talk about it, but live in the present. Maybe they ship to the US and you can drive to the border to get them ah here's a kicker i'm not going into the united states anytime soon i decided to stop going to the united states after 9 11 after they passed the patriot act multiple times i realized that the direction that the united states was going was a very very dark place which is to a degree where we are and it's going to get a lot worse so i have no desire to enter the united states it's uh, uh especially when bush uh, gave the speech of the three axes of evil of people being born in the wrong places at the wrong times or something like this it's, if there's a target on your forehead you don't go to places where there's a target on your forehead it's not a good idea right uh, so I haven't gone to the United States since 2002 but I'll gladly have somebody ship <laughs> it to me to Canada <laughs> oh fun I remember that speech yeah elder god what a speech and a lot of people won't remember that speech i remember that speech right it's one of the few actually i think it's the only uh, no i think i've only listened to two three presidential speeches maybe four or five right it's the one that stood out that really has defined the united states for the next few decades okay People should pay attention to what's going on because it's what's going on is not now it's from then right when 9-11 happened it affected a lot of our people here in Belgium as well yeah a lot of people period but we keep politics and politics gang gang thanks for being here Zalzalek is just thought Hawthorne fruit right I don't know I don't know I don't know what Hawthorne fruit is if if anybody knows what Zalza like is, if it's hawthorn fruit, please let me know. I'll I'll try to track some down. I'll be the happiest Chicho ever. <laughs> Get your hands on a bowl of Zalza like. I'll I'll we'll do a live stream of me eating a bowl of Zalza like. I don't know how bowl how big of a bowl it would be. It's the river of blood speech. This stream was awesome. Awesome, young Polax. Gang, thanks for being here. Mods, thank you for taking care of business. I'm going to put on my glasses. Got to click on these things and make sure I'm clicking on the right thing. Uh, thanks for being here. If you want to know who I am, what I'm up to, yeah, it is. It is. I get it from my Turkish shop. It is. I've got to write this down. Hawthorne. Hawthorne fruit. I'm going to... Where do you live, uh, kebabs? Hawthorne fruit. I gotta look at this thing. Hawthorne fruit. It looks the same. Oh, is that it? Is it? Okay, I gotta look this up. I'm gonna tag this. Gang, if you wanna follow this work, if you wanna know who I am, what this is all about, I am on Patreon patreon.com forward slash chicho chicho uk so far from canada unfortunately uh yeah so far so far <laughs> you can follow this work on patreon okay uh if you want to support this work supporting this work through patreon is fantastic we so to do so i don't put anything behind paywalls everything's creative commons share and share like for those of you who've been supporting this work through patreon thank you very much for the support we are live streaming this on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash chicho live. C H Y C H O L I V E. Thank you for the follows, gang. Thank you for the subs. Thank you for the discussions. Thank you for the conversations. Thank you for sharing. 
information okay and if those of you who are watching after the fact if you want to follow this work if you want to participate in the chat as happening twitch is where you want to be at okay thank you guys as well gang thank you guys as well i do announce these live streams on elo minds vk gap parlor and twitter for now uh 30 minutes before we go live for scheduled streams and just before we go live for unscheduled streams so you can follow the work there if uh, you're interested in seeing what this is all about for live streams we have open discussions uh where we don't have any visuals involved we do record the stuff with the lapel mic on an external recorder and upload the audio to soundcloud as podcast and if you want to follow that work follow the podcast there and there's going to be a lot of content coming up there because we have a big library huge library of hundreds of videos and audio that we can we're going to be uploading to soundcloud um, you can follow the work there soundcloud.com forward slash chicho chycho and it should be available on your favorite podcasting platform i love the pickles right yeah lots of pickles lots of pickles we've been making lots of pickles this year super super nice and they're delicious and this this thing that you see here that's covered up that's sauerkraut that's it's a big big thing of sauerkraut that's been sitting there fermenting for at least over a month now and most likely next week we're gonna sort it all out we gotta figure out what to do with it because we're not gonna because it's fermenting we're not gonna um, jar it because it's gonna lose this probiotic so we're gonna make enough room in the fridge to put the stuff in there we'll see what we can do about it we're gonna be eating a lot of a lot of sauerkraut okay and this video will be uploaded to YouTube and BitChute. and if you want to support this work through YouTube and BitChute, you can follow you can subscribe you can share you can like you can participate in the conversations the comments and if you're on YouTube you can join YouTube membership yeah Randall I gotta make some kimchi when I'm not really eating too much spicy so that's why we went with sauerkraut but same process as uh, sauerkraut making kimchi not that I've made any but I know it's supposed to be the same process kimchi I used to eat a lot of kimchi ate a little bit too much kimchi and amazing food uh, student food by the way someone asked earlier about student food rice kimchi Go buy yourself a big jar of kimchi from a Korean store or a Japanese store, okay? And put it in the fridge. It lasts a long time, and it's spicy, and it's got good nutrients, and you can just eat it with rice. Uh, and little bit, one egg, you get your protein, and that's a full meal deal as well, okay? Gang, thanks for being here. Thank you for helping me to make kuku and have some drinks and have some conversation and i'll announce the next set of streams most likely uh next monday sunday monday tuesday it's going to be about a five day lag before i announce the next set of streams bye everyone mods thank you for taking care of business it's my pleasure man thank you very much for being here bye everyone <laughs>